four counties in the state of Georgia that does not have a CASA program. So a CASA program is done with the uh, cooperation of your juvenile court judge. Basically, children who are in foster care have the custodial parents and the non-custodial parents who are sometimes arguing over what's best for them and how to possibly get them back in their household. Then you've got the foster parents who are there and you would think that the foster parents are there to be that advocate, but they're really busy. A lot of times they also have their own children or they have multiple foster children in the home and there's just not enough time in the day for them to be everything that that child needs. So what CASA does is the judge says, okay, I want to, here's an order, I want a CASA appointed for this child. And they come in and they are there to make sure that that child's needs are taken care of. They are the advocate. They make sure that they're getting what they need in that foster home. They make sure that they're getting what they need at school. If there are doctor's appointments or therapy appointments they need to get to, they make sure that they get to those. If they need to get to court for something, they make sure that they're, that, that happens. Um, they're, they're, they're an administrative um, ambassador for that child. Um, Commissioner Evans, if you want to talk a little bit more about the program. There's nothing, there's nope. nothing else to say. You, you really know the heart and soul of it. what you were saying about parents. I mean, there's many parents that in the community that have kids, and that is what um, the Marcus was saying about our community. There's many families that really need an advocate for them, their parents. They go to court, and there's nobody there to support them. And with this program, you have volunteers, and also you have a person, you have a person that more or less is the overseer of the program. And it's something that we really need more than any of all the other areas around have one except us. And I think we have the largest amount of juveniles that go through the court system that never have an advocate. So th that's one thing that we've been pushing for and hoping for and wishing that we can put it together where we can assist some of the families and some of these young children without going back to court. And to go back with Paige said, I think all of us have an opportunity to go in here to some of the revocation. If you was to sit through that, you wouldn't have a problem in want to get the CASA program here because a lot of the ones that go through is they're young and they really need this. So Paige, did I hear you correctly then that if we, if we move toward a CASA program that our our um, financial responsibility would involve an, an administrator. Of right. That so it, it operates as a nonprofit, um, okay. and there is I, if behind the green sheet, I provided their last um, annual report for 2016, 2017. So some of it's it's just their fundraising efforts, but there's also some great information in here on um, on Casa, and you can kind of see the breakdown of how that runs financially. Um, and, and there's already a kind of a regional hub for CASA in Thomasville. Um, at the Open Finucky occasion, Commissioner Evans and I met with the person at the state level who's over that. We would like for her to come down if you all come out of retreat and you're interested to talk to you all more about how that works. I think that um, Commissioner Evans' concern is, you know, we need to make sure we have a local director because they are saying for um, for our county, I think that we already have between two and 300 children in foster services. So we we would be busy here with the program. So with this program, Ms. Evans, would it be just specifically for foster children mm -hmm. only, or would it be able to do something that would it's work little, outside of the foster? It's work, it's work outside also. Whoever the judge appoints. If, if we came in, if you had two parents that came in and there was a child that was continuing to have problems and, and was continuing to come before the juvenile court judge and he said, like Judge Ellerby used to, I think the real problem here is the parents, not the child, right. then he could appoint a CASA for that. And then the CASA reports back to the court. But to Commissioner Marshall's um, remarks earlier about there being programs for kids and all of that sort of stuff, <clears throat> kind of running into the next thing which we can talk about here in a second as far as the success of our grant programs and how that's working. Um, a lot of the problems that we have that start kids in the juvenile system are because they're runaways. And they're running away because they don't have a stable environment at home. And a lot of them are coming out of the foster system. And because of the rewrite of the juvenile court uh, legislation, they have to commit an offense other than one of the seven deadly sins. 
they have to commit an offense five times before they are put officially into the system to go to something like a regional detention center. So we've got juveniles who are committing um, vehicle thefts. There's drive-by shooting. A lot of this is feeding into gang violence. I mean, there are some significant things that are happening, and these children are given multiple chances before they're ever getting into the system. Um, that's a problem because the whole purpose of the rewrite of that juvenile court system was to get these children back on a better path before they had a felony record and before they forever had a hard time getting into school or getting a job or whatever. And now because there's not stiffer penalties in between for them, they're going to high and aggravated straight from juvenile court to superior court and it's high and aggravated. Um, and and it's, it's something that we have to address and, and we can say, well, kind of like what we talked about yesterday, it's not directly our problem, but indirectly it affects economic development as far as our community goes, it affects your budget. I mean, there's... So what you're saying is they're getting a tremendous amount of experience before inter any yes, intervention takes place. Yeah, it hit the nail on the head. And then when they're adults, they have a rap sheet that talk. Is, uh, I have to get it okay. Well, I, I would say, and I, I would say, and commissioners, if there's any problem, I certainly would like to hear what the Thomasville representative has, if we could set a meeting up, maybe the work session or something for them to come and do a From presentation. Mm -hmm. We can work on that. I'd be very interested in hearing what they have to say about that. Because again, you know, it's like you said, you know, we don't directly have a responsibility, but if indirectly, if there's something that we can that we can do to feel like that we're really making an impact. Again, a lot of these programs, I, you know, I personally am always cautious about programs. What I, what I like to see, though, is programs that can prove results. Yes, Show me what you can do, and then if you're successful, I'll support you every day. I mean, I mentioned that about the Boys and Girls Club. I've seen what they do. I know what their success rate is, and so, again, if, if CASA is something that can show success rates with those young people, then definitely if there's some way that we can help, then that's, that means that we don't have to deal with, hopefully, in the criminal justice system. One other program that we would like to look at that, again, goes along with what Commissioner Marshall said is a teen court program. Okay. So what that does is it's a volunteer program for um, the attorneys in a community, and they, they have a sort of like the community center environment. This would be something very similar to mock trial. And um, the, the young people in a community that would like to be a part of the teen court program, they come in and they go through a training. The court's held on Saturday. You have a, um, an attorney that presides as the judge. And again, the juvenile court judge is officially involved in the process because if a child comes in with a misdemeanor and he would say, okay, one of your options is, is to be sentenced to teen court if you'd like to go through that process. And then teen court has um, a little bit of leeway as far as sentencing goes for things like community service or restitution, that sort of thing. So then on Saturday, they have the court and you have young people in the community that are part of the program that show up and they are everyone from the attorneys for court process all the way down to the bailiff and all of the court positions in between and they learn about the court process and go through the court process and then these young people are truly judged by jury of their peers because they have the jury there that you know makes a decision but it just you know gives children something to be a part of they're learning more of um, the court system and what really happens when you go to court um, and Dublin's Lawrence County, Lawrence County have a um, joint program that they do there Douglas Coffee County recently stood up a teen court there and the county clerk or the city clerk for the city of Douglas was very instrumental in being a part of that and she and I worked together on several things in our district. So again, I know it's a program, I know it costs money, I totally, I totally agree with you. Um, but it, it could be something worth looking at depending on what that budget is that would be a way to get young people in to see what really can happen in court and that there are real consequences to that and, and how that process works. Okay. Well, again, um, you know, we need to look at whatever opportunities are out there, and, and I'm kind of speaking for the commissioners a bit. But, I mean, if you have an objection, just let me know. But 
Uh, I have no problem again if someone wants to come in and, and give us a little bit more in-depth information about it, at least to explore it at this point. So, and then we can make a decision whether it's somewhere, you know, something we want to do. Let me say this. For the last couple of years, the last three years, and following the statistics that's going through the juvenile court, we have had over 1,300 young children under the age of 14 to 6 to go through the juvenile court in a year's time. It's a small percentage, but it's a lot of kids to go through the juvenile court system. You know, <clears throat> for an example, I've attended several of the graduations for DUI court mm -hmm. that we currently have. And you, just, you can see the successes there, and, and you know, um, you feel like that those individuals have made a change or they've gone through that entire program without abusing alcohol. And one of the things that I've never really quite understood about it is that you've got to get a certain number of DUIs before you go to the to, uh, DUI court. It, it looks to me like that again they're getting a lot of experience and they're getting several arrests and we're having to deal with them in court to where if that again if that intervention is something that is beneficial and successful maybe we need to do it on the front end not on the back end that's just something that I, I think that's mind. key no I, and i think that that's part of what casa really helps is if you like you said earlier if you let those children know that there is someone who cares about them, there is someone who's willing to be their advocate, and that just because they're being moved from house to house doesn't mean that they're lost in the system, then they're less likely to get in with um, a bad crowd. Um, I talked to um, law enforcement earlier this week about our current grant programs and what they're seeing now versus before, um, and it it was part of my comments earlier. It's significant and we're not getting anywhere and there's gotta be five offenses before something's really done and this is um, is getting to be a problem. It, it You gotta get them on the front end and, and the comment was made that with, you know, understanding that that money is granted for those programs, that that same investment was made in programs in these children before they started to get in trouble, we would have a much greater outcome. Right now we're only serving 80 young people a year um, we've got 70% rate on that, those 80 completing the program, but then you've got 20% of those participants that are either reoffending or they're catching new charges while they're in the program. So, it's something to consider. Yeah. And Mr. Chairman, you notice every time we go to one of those uh, graduations, they started off at a young age. Mm -hmm. and yeah, they do. When they do their testimony, you can, you can see how they got where they're at. No doubt about it. But, and and again, I mean, if they stay true to those testimonies, then you 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 have to hope that that program has benefited them. Uh, and and rather than being a burden on society, they are converted <coughs> over to a an individual that is contributing to your society at that point. And so a lot of them has gotten jobs, found ways to you know to do the things that they need to do without abusing. Um, drugs and alcohol. So I can see some positive things in it. Well, we can say the same thing about the cost of program next year. Okay. <laughs> I understand. All right. Is that juvenile program? That's that, it. I that think. Takes care of it. You want to talk about the software? Yeah, I'd like to talk about the software if we can a minute. Do we have to? Well, I think we should. <laughs> um, <laughs>